Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru and I've got another product review for you here on the channel today. This time around I'm checking out Patriot's Viper Steel DDR4 4400CL19 RAM kit, which is the fastest kit that Patriot sells. It's also probably one of the fastest kits on the market, but what really makes it stand out is the price. At under $150, it's really cheap for 16 gigabytes of 4400 MHz RAM. Now this is actually going to be a follow-up to a couple of shootouts I've conducted here on the channel, first looking at RAM frequency and then looking at RAM timings. In the RAM frequency shootout, I did make a couple of discoveries. I focused on 3200, 3600, and 4000 speeds, and I found that on the Intel platform, 4000 MHz RAM did scale relatively well in some applications that had me thinking, well, what if I went even higher? How high can I go? On the AMD platform, I was limited by the Zen 2 Infinity fabric speed of 1800 MHz, so in that system, 3600 MHz RAM actually performed the best. So in my follow-up shootout, I actually looked at 3600 MHz RAM across the board, but with three different timings, 18, 17, and 16. Two of those kits are actually on the bench with me here, the Viper RGB CL17 kit and the Dominator Platinum kit from Corsair that had CL16 timings. Now, a number of viewers came to me afterwards and said, you know, those aren't even really high-end kits for AMD users. Why don't you go with a G-Skill or a Team Group CL14 or 15 kit? Honestly, they were really, really expensive. And I thought, you know what? I've got a hunch that these are all kind of the same underneath. You know, they're Samsung B-Die, and they're charging a lot for these because they're targeting these AMD users who want really highly binned 3600 megahertz RAM. But what if I took a relatively inexpensive 4400 megahertz kit that used Samsung B-Die and tightened the timings with lower frequencies, specifically 3600, could I get a great level of performance at a good price? Now, since I do have this on hand, I'm also gonna test it on the Intel platform. So I'm gonna actually kill two birds with one stone, so to speak. I'm gonna see if my Core i9-9900K can run this at the XMP settings of 4400 CL 19, 19, 1939. Those are pretty aggressive. And then I'm going to switch over to the AMD platform. I'm just going to drop it down right away to 3600. And then I'm going to try to tighten those timings and see if I can hit maybe CL 15, even CL 14 at 1.45 volts, which is the limit I'm going to put on the system just to keep it in check and make sure I don't damage the memory controller. So, I think this will be pretty interesting. Like I said, I'm going to be really doing two different tests here, one on the Intel platform for maximum frequency and one on the AMD platform for tightest timings. So let's take a look at what we can do with the benchmarks. First, I'll give you a quick tour of the platforms. This is my AMD Ryzen 9 3900X. It's liquid cooled and running with Precision Boost Overdrive enabled, and it has an RTX 2080 Ti on Graphics Duty. And here's my Intel system. It has the same RTX 2080 Ti, but it runs a Core i9-9900K, which is liquid cooled and has multi-core enhancement enabled. Now I'm going to jump back to my AMD system to show you how I set up the RAM timings using the widely available DRAM calculator for Ryzen. First you set up your profile and then you click calculate safe or calculate fast to get your primary, secondary, and even tertiary timings plus various other settings like voltage and gear down mode. Now they do differ just slightly but I found that it does make a difference. You'll see that there are a couple of timings that change when you switch from safe to fast and like these right here and frankly it actually did make a difference. I couldn't get the calculate fast to work at its slightly more aggressive timings even when I upped the voltage. You see here it recommends a 1.37 volt and then up to 1.4 volts. Well, I actually tried up to 1.5 volts and the fast preset just wouldn't work. So I just decided to go with the safe preset. Even then, these recommended voltages wouldn't allow it to stay stable. I did use the full 1.45 volts that this kit is rated at and then I got all of these timings to work through my entire benchmark suite. And the first benchmark I'll start with is the multi-core RAM benchmark built into Geekbench 4. This is a really good way to prove that your RAM is actually working as intended. Some of the benchmarks I'm about to show you will demonstrate absolutely no difference based on RAM, but here you can see that the Viper Steel 4400 kit when tuned to 3600 CL14 speeds is amazing on the AMD platform with incredibly low latency. Keep in mind, lower is better with latency. And then extraordinary RAM copy speeds 
truly nearly 20% higher than even the best 3600 kit that I'd previously tested. Now for an overall system benchmark, I turned to Geekbench 5 and here the results are equally phenomenal. Over 13% faster with the tuned 4400 kit at 3600 megahertz. And it just goes to show how much all of the timings matter. I had three previous kits that differed in the cast latency and yet all the scores were the same. But when you tune all of the timings as I did with this Patriot Viper 4400 kit, it really pulls ahead. Alas, the progress ground to a halt here with Cinebench, which has proven over and over again in my benchmarks to be completely unresponsive to RAM speeds. The V-Ray benchmark is similar in the sense that it doesn't really get a huge boost from RAM speeds, but here we do see something that's probably beyond the margin of error with a 1.7% boost over the previous high-speed Dominator Platinum kit. Turning to the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark, I'm focusing here on the CPU score, which is a physics test, and we see a huge boost over 9% faster with the Tune 3600 kit. And this is a really good indication that memory speed does affect more than just pure memory tests. This is a physics computation test, and it definitely benefits from faster RAM. Now turning to my game benchmarks, I start with Dirt Rally, and the results are fairly unimpressive, but they're consistent with what I found in my previous DDR4 3600 shootout. Frankly, this game, like most games, is not that responsive to RAM speeds once you get past the initial bottleneck. Even worse is Rise of the Tomb Raider, which truly shows no pattern whatsoever. The RAM is simply irrelevant here. Similarly, with this live multiplayer round in Battlefield 4, I don't see any pattern whatsoever. There are a whole lot of other factors at play, and RAM doesn't have any effect. As it turns out, the biggest boost came in the most advanced game, Battlefield 5, where we saw a 1.6% boost going to the fastest RAM. Now, I was really impressed by those benchmarks on the AMD platform. Simply by tightening timings at 3600 megahertz, I was able to achieve performance up to 9% higher than my best 3600 kits that I previously tested. But I want to make something really, really clear. I did have to use that DRAM calculator to set secondary and tertiary timings. I actually went in and tried initially just to set the primary timings of 14, 15, 14, 30 manually, and the performance was terrible, worse than my other 3600 kits. And that's because all the secondary and tertiary timings were set for a 4400 megahertz speed, which meant they were way too loose to use at 3600. So on AMD, you do have to put in that extra amount of work to go and research and find all those secondary and tertiary timings. They absolutely matter. It's no joke. You can't just type in a few numbers and expect a boost in performance. And that is one of the drawbacks using a kit that isn't actually spec'd at 3600 megahertz if that's what you're actually aiming for. It takes that additional time, that investment, and that research that you're going to have to do, perhaps watching this video, other videos, and learning, well, how do I actually take advantage of a 4400 megahertz kit on my system that's limited to 3600 or 3700 megahertz? Now let's talk about the Intel platform. Keeping in mind, this is not a competition of AMD versus Intel. It's just about how the RAM performs on these two different systems. Now, right off the bat, using my Core i9-9900K and Asus ROG Maximus 11 Hero board, this is high-end gear, I couldn't get this kit to boot at its XMP profile of 4400 megahertz using 1.45 volts. I then tried increasing the voltage to 1.5 volts, didn't work. I then tried increasing some of the other secondary voltages, still no luck, I couldn't get it to post. Finally, I figured, well, I'll use that secondary profile that's included on this kit, which is at 4266. Surely that must work, right? No post. At that point, I was ready to throw in the towel and make this an AMD-only video and say that this simply didn't work on Intel, at least not on my Core i9-9900K. But then I had kind of a late-night revelation and realized, you know what? I've actually tested the 4000 megahertz version of this kit on this very system, and I had great performance out of that kit. It had timings at 19, 19, 19, 39, which was fine for a stock kit, but I thought, well, why don't I take this 4400 megahertz kit and do the same kind of tightening of the timings that I did with the AMD platform and see what I can achieve. That's exactly what I did and I got great results. Here are the timings I achieved. You can see 17, 17, 17, 38 at 2T. Now I didn't have the Ryzen DRAM calculator to depend on here, so I couldn't optimize the secondary and tertiary timings all that much. 
Now, I believe that on Intel, it doesn't actually matter quite as much because frankly, I got a huge boost in performance just focusing on these primary timings. If you guys know of a similar calculator for the Intel platform, please let me know in the comments and I'll add it to the video description. But I went based on gut instinct here and also looking at some other kits on the market that were sold as 4,000 kits at a really high bin level. They were typically using a CAS latency of 17. And so that's what I started with here. And then I actually set the other timings to 17, 17 as well, 38, and then 2T because I have found that Intel really doesn't like a 1T command rate. It just throws everything off, causes a lot of crashes. So that's what I ended up with. I'm really pleased with the performance. And as we get into the benchmarks, I want you to keep in mind that in terms of the bandwidth increase, I actually found a greater bandwidth increase on this Intel platform than I even found on AMD, which is saying something. So it's not like I got cheated on the Intel platform with this kit. Running at 4,000 CL17 was very, very impressive. Let's dive into those benchmarks. I start again with Geekbench 4 to get a sense of the RAM speed itself, and it's amazing here. I got a 19% boost on the AMD system. With this Tune 4000 kit, I got 26% higher copy speeds than any of my previous kits, including the previous 4000 kit. Turning to Geekbench 5, for an overall CPU score, we have a result that's 8% faster than the previous best, their Viper RGB at 3600. So this Tune 4000 kit is definitely jumping ahead. Take note that I didn't run this test on that previous 4000 kit, and so there will be a few benchmarks here where you'll see that one drop out of the charts. For you benchmark jockeys who love to compare Cinebench R20, well, another disappointment. The 4000 kit is terrible here. It's the slowest, actually. So don't rely on RAM speeds if you're looking for competitive Cinebench scores. As on the AMD system, we see a small boost in VRA using a highly tuned RAM kit. Here it amounts to around 1%. Returning again to the 3D Mark Times by CPU score, we do see a nice boost here. It comes out to around 5%, which isn't quite as large as it was on the AMD system, but still very significant. Turning now to game benchmark, here's Dirt Rally. And again, we don't see much of a change here based on RAM speeds. The slowest is the DDR4 3600CL18, but all the others are relatively equal. Same story here with Rise of the Tomb Raider, really no significant effect based on RAM speeds. I know I'm starting to sound like a broken record, but again, in Battlefield 4 multiplayer, there is very little impact of RAM speeds beyond that initial boost from the slow 3600CL18 kit. Turning finally to Battlefield 5, this is the biggest difference we've seen in any of the game benchmarks I've presented, over 4% based on just the RAM. That is very significant. Sometimes you can upgrade your CPU and see smaller benefits than that. So if you are a Battlefield 5 player, tune your RAM and reap the benefits. All right, I was actually pretty surprised at how much some of those benchmarks improved just by tightening the timings while keeping the frequency the same as I've used in previous reviews, 3600 megahertz on AMD and up to 4000 megahertz on the Intel platform. Now, does that mean I recommend everyone go out and buy this kit or a similarly highly bin kit? Well, no. First of all, for games, memory speed really doesn't matter that much. I've shown that over and over again. And I know that I'm going to get some comments from some folks that say, I don't know what I'm doing. I should be testing at 720p to uncover those true memory bottlenecks. Guys, go take a hike. I received that comment so many times and I simply don't care about it. I don't run games at 720p and neither do you. And if I did find a memory bottleneck at 720p, what would you do with that? Would you then lower your game's resolution to 720p so you could enjoy the benefit of really high speed RAM? No, of course you wouldn't. You'd run it at the native resolution of your monitor, which is probably 1080p or 1440p or maybe 4K. And you'd just enjoy it and you'd forget about your memory bandwidth because it doesn't matter at those resolutions you'd be much better off spending the extra money on perhaps a higher bin GPU, maybe a factory overclock, or stepping up one grade in terms of your CPU from say a 3700X to an XT, or an Intel 10700K to maybe a 10900K, something like that. It's not worth it to spend that extra money on memory if all you're doing is gaming. It just doesn't improve that much. Yes, I did see one game improve quite a bit, Battlefield 5, which was actually kind of amazing 
particularly considering that it's actually graphically intensive as well. But it's a very complex game engine and it does rely heavily on the CPU subsystem. So memory mattered there. And if you play that game or other very high-end games that have very sophisticated game engines, go ahead, spend a little extra money on the RAM kit if you've already maxed out your GPU and CPU according to your budget. So for everyone else in terms of content creation, Definitely, definitely, this thing is worth it. I mean, this kit is typically 135, and most recently I've seen it down around 120. You get a pretty big boost in performance for content creation and overall bandwidth versus, say, another kit at $80 or $90. So that extra $30, maybe up to $40 you're spending, is probably going to be worth it for you, but you do have to invest the time. So I did have to use Ryzen DRAM calculator for the AMD system. I had to use my gut instinct on the Intel system. I've shared my timings with you so you can at least use that as a starting point. Look, I didn't go for any benchmark wins here. I'm not trying to show you exactly how far you can push this. There are other people who've pushed this kit further. I just wanted to show you, well, what can you do at 3600 megahertz on AMD and 4000 megahertz on Intel? Now I have one more little secret for you guys that I wanted to share with you, and particularly for Intel users. All those Intel benchmarks I shared with you, I was running four sticks. I had 32 gigs in the system. I paired this kit with my other Patriot Viper 4000 kit, and that kit was also able to achieve the same timings as this 4400 megahertz kit when run at 4000. So it's a little bit of an Easter egg for you guys. I'm going to show you a quick view right here. Yes, that's four sticks in the system, and two of those are the 4,000 megahertz sticks that are even cheaper than these 4,400 megahertz sticks. So if you want the best deal on the Intel platform, go with the Patriot Viper 4000. I didn't go back and test that on the AMD platform. Perhaps it would have performed just as well as the 4,400 megahertz kit. I can't tell you. But Overall, definitely Patriot Viper has some really good RAM here. You just have to be willing to tinker a little, both on AMD, where you're going to have to go into those sub-timings, and on Intel, where you won't be able to rely on that XMP profile. Hopefully, this has cleared up some questions that you may have had on RAM performance. If you have any more questions, please post them down below in the comment section. I'll be sure to get back to you. As always, I really appreciate a like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time.